below freezing outside, but things are about to heat up here inside the Bob Devaney Center as we have the 10th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers hosting the 18th ranked Wisconsin Badgers. We're live, like I said, here inside the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we're set for some Big Ten wrestling here on Big Ten Plus. Hello, everyone. I'm Kelby Bachman alongside Andrew Pfeiffer, my partner today. Thank you for making us part of your Sunday afternoon, and Andrew, we have a good one here. Absolutely. Freezing cold outside in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's snowing, it's sleeting, it's just all the above. Fans are still finding their way into the stands as we have an incredible matchup here this afternoon. And let's take a look at the history between these two teams. Wisconsin leads the overall series 12 to 11 with two ties. However, they won the last two meetings, including last year's 22 to 12 victory in Madison. Well, we'd be starting here today with the 125. One, 13 yeah. and three on the year, two and one in Big Ten duels. And Kelby, expect Liam Cronin to come out with a little bit of vengeance after his last match, not even lasting 30 seconds against number one ranked Spencer Lee, getting stuck in that tilt position early on in Iowa City, now hoping to last a little bit longer than that this time. Yeah, Liam comes in, he's 2-0 and in his career versus Eric Barnett. And Liam wrestling really well, like I said, this year he's 13-3. and a couple weeks ago, he beat Patrick McKee and Michael D'Augustino. He earned himself NCAA Big Ten and USA Wrestler of the Week honors. So coming in with a lot of confidence. Yes, unfortunate to get pinned by Lee Spencer Lee last Friday. And the chance already starting here at the Devaney Center. Crowd's getting pretty pumped up to start this match off. Yeah, they have the lights dimmed a little bit here to to almost spotlight the duel or the mat so pretty pretty cool atmosphere and, and, and a lot more people here than I anticipated I, I should say for a cold chilly Sunday afternoon still no score one minute passed here in the first period And it looks like right now both Barnett and Cronin just both working their tie-ins. Not a whole lot of action yet. Still scoreless with minute 30 to go. Yeah, Cronin trying to dig that left-handed underhook in. A good head position by Barnett countering that underhook. And I've just never heard it this quiet before in the Devaney <laughs> Center, Kelby. It is... I feel like we, our voices are kind of the ones overlapping everything right now. You can hear everything the coaches are saying. and Oh, my goodness. That's just how focused and ready these Cornhuskers are after coming off of that absolute mutilation last week in Iowa City. Hoping to bounce back here. Manning, something must have lit a fire under him because here we go. Shot by... Barnett, two takedown by Cronin as Barnett tried to go for the roll through. And how about Liam Cronin? <laughs> Barnett tried to roll through, Cronin stuck on the hips. As Cronin's gonna score his first two. 45 seconds to go here, two nothing. Liam Cronin with the lead. Barnett looking to dig some fingers it looks like. He's up to his feet, peels hands and is away for a pretty big escape there. I was gonna say, Kelby, I was surprised Liam Cronin let him get away with that without a mat return. As Barnett just makes this a one point closer. Yeah, you always wanna, if you can, try to end the period on top. Liam had an opportunity, but Barnett did a great job. Peeling hands, got his hips away for the escape, a big escape as it's two to one and we will head to the second period here with that score two to one. Liam with the takedown. In the first escape by Barnett, Barnett will defer, Liam will go down. And there's that takedown there from Cronin. Able to get himself in a good position off the roll through from Barnett as Cronin leads into the second period. Yep, he's up and away. No real ride attempt there by Barnett. So we're back to our feet once again. Both guys collar tie here. Liam again trying to force that left-handed underhook. Half 
half shot by Barnett. Liam really stalking Barnett. You know, he's pushing the pace, he's, he's on him. His hands are always constantly on Barnett. He just can't seem to get away. Like you said, Kelby, it looks like Barnett's trying to make something work, but it's hard for him to set something up when Cronin's putting your hands in his face almost kind of more or less blocking his offensive. Front headlock now for Cronin, and they'll call stalemate. 55 seconds to go here, second period. And Cronin goes right back into the tie ends. Yeah, right off that whistle, you see him just hard collar tie. And Cronin's wrestling with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. This is a huge match. Both top 10 wrestlers at that 125 spot. Cronin, obviously, I mean, I've said it enough already, had that terrible loss to Spencer Lee in just 38 seconds of the match. Caught himself on a tilt. Obviously wants to come back and redeem himself. He still is that number five spot. Of course, he's probably going to see Spencer Lee down the road in the postseason. But right now, just kind of trying to more or less do some resume building, Kelby. Yeah, and what a win this would be for Cronin. He's had a lot of awesome wins this year. Again, he's 2-0 against Barnett. Time ticking away here, under five to go. Barnett is a two-time All-American, finishing seventh and eighth. And I'll tell you what, Barnett is not an easy opponent. The senior, 14-4 and four overall this year. He's 9-4 and four in duels. So Barnett's not used to losing. However, starting the third period, Cronin's in a good position here. He's gonna have that riding time. And he is ahead by two points with a minute 49 left. Barnett's gonna have to make some big moves here. All right, so Barnett does get the escape. Closes the match to three to two. And now we'll settle this on our feet as Barnett's in on a shot. He's got the far ankle trying to come around the waist. Wisconsin wants the to. Cronin keeping that wizard in, preventing the points, nothing yet. Looks like Cronin's trying to roll through it. If Cronin can get back to his feet, he'd save the two points. Nothing yet. Now Barnett has that left leg shelved across his waist. He needs to try to get his right arm out of that wizard. Nice job by Cronin. Really tough wizard wow. there to, to cause that stalemate. Unbelievable. Liam Cronin just had that wizard sunk in so deep. Great defense, and there's a reshot from Cronin. Here we go, Kelby. He's got a cradle locked up, and he gets the takedown now, and that makes it 5-2. And a statement from Cronin saying, hey, you almost got me, now I'm gonna go get you. Taking a three point lead with 44 seconds to go. Kelby, what a statement. Barnett with a huge escape there. Riding time not a factor, 35 seconds to go. It's still only a two point match, so a takedown would tie it for Barnett. And there's a takedown attempt, now he's going for a headlock. <laughs> but Getting a little again, dicey. Just unable to get Liam's time's ticking away. 15 seconds to go here. And there's finally a stalemate with 13 seconds on the clock. Back to back stalemates off the wizard for Liam Cronin. Just relentless defense. And then there it is. A Liam Cronin. Shot. It's gonna salt this match away. Kelby Liam Cronin getting the win over Eric Barnett. Another big victory for Liam. His awesome senior year continues. Liam Cronin with three takedowns and takes the first match of the night. 7-3, Huskers on the board first. And for the Huskers, it's Kyle Berwick. Kyle Berwick ranked 10th currently at that 133 spot, 10 and 3 on the year. And we look at Lamont, who is 7 and 11. One of my favorite gas stations, Kelby. I had to throw that one in there. Come on. <laughs> 
Berwick. Kel- he's look. I'm sorry. You're just looking at me now. Like, really? You gotta say that right now. <laughs> <sighs> Like you said, Lamont coming in here, 7-11. and 11. Berwick spent three years at Wisconsin before transferring this year. So Berwick's a redshirt junior, like you said, transferring from Wisconsin going up against Lamont, who is a grad student. 7-11 and 11 on the year, 4-8 and eight in duels. So Berwick kind of has a little bit of an edge here as Lamont is still unranked. But Berwick obviously sitting at that 10 spot. And no points awarded yet here, Kelly. Yeah, it looks like they might check for blood here. Yeah, I think he's got blood, yep. We're gonna go to a blood time here. Left-handed. High crotch defended by Lamont. And there's an attack by Lamont. He's got a leg. A roll through by Berwick, who now has the ankle of Lamont. So now each wrestler with an ankle. Incredible defense from Berwick on the roll through. Able to get behind. And if he can just get that right leg to escape, he can turn this into two of his own. But I think they're going to call stalemate, Kelby. Yeah, and there was no hesitation in that roll through either. Lamont got to the leg right away. Immediately there was a, a somersault by Berwick. And no points, like you said, stalemate was the call. Minute to go here, first period. Huskers lead the duel 3-0 after Liam Cronin. 7-3 victory over Eric Barnett. And just dead silence in these first couple of matches here at the Bob Devaney Kelby. But we do know as the matches go on and the duel starts to come to an end, this place will be loud on their feet and so will we. <laughs> so stay with us, folks. We're quiet now, but just you wait. A couple more matches in and stuff like this happens and the noise starts to pick up. But now it's just all focus wrestling. It's silent. It's all on technique. You can hear every word the coach is saying. <laughs> So we have a little bit of action here. Berwick in on the shot, but a front headlock by Lamont. 10 seconds to go here in the first period. And they I will let this one tick away. And that'll end the first period. Kelby still scoreless <laughs> from what we thought a couple of takedowns they traded. We're going to end up in some sort of points, but Nothing yet, like we see here, Berwick tried to go in on a shot. Lamont had that top headlock position, both just playing outstanding defense in this first period. Berwick had his choice, he deferred. Lamont goes down, so Berwick on top here to start the second period. And Berwick has to be careful, he doesn't want to get that stalling time. Last week ran into a little bit of trouble there. Lamont is able to escape. 19 seconds of ride time built up for Kyle Berwick. And now we're back on our feet. And you don't want to panic just yet, obviously, if you're Berwick. As both wrestlers seem to be just working levels, working shots, there's just... Not a whole lot of offensive. So, if, oh, thought we were going to see something spicy there for a minute. <laughs> One minute remaining in the second period. There's a nice half shot by Lamont. Like you're saying, no real attempt. It's too much here in the second period. There's a nice shot, but a good. Just a swing and a miss. And it seems like Berwick. they really want to be offensive, you know? Like they want to go in on those takedowns and get something, but both are just having great defense and see Lamont in on a good sprawl and then front head position and Berwick able to just get by on those wizards and roll throughs. I mean, they're both playing aggressively. It's just they keep almost out defensing each other. <laughs> Another half shot by Berwick. So now. Attention might turn to Lamont here to 
be a little more active as we have 10 seconds to go here in the second period. Lamont with the second period escape is the only score so far. Now we'll do it so it will be Berwick's choice and he will go down. I think Manning wants him to go down. Just get that point, tie it right back up. Because if they go in the neutral position, we just might see another two minutes of a lot of tie-ins and no points scored yet. However, Berwick can get back up to his feet, tie this match. He does have the advantage with the riding time, but only by 13 seconds. Now dwindling down. And Lamont could take this riding time. Yeah, Lamont has that right wrist of Berwick. Now it's free, so Berwick now has a little bit better opportunity. He looks like he's trying to fight hands. He's posted with his head on the mat. A lot of, a lot of pressure there by Lamont. Oh, Berwick's got to be careful here on that roll through. Could have gotten stuck on his back. There's a roll out of bounds. Fresh start. <laughs> 26 seconds of riding time built up for Lamont. And I think that was a smart move by Berwick, just getting out of that position. He had his arm trap, Lamont on top. Was able to get out of bounds, get a little bit of a reset. He gets another opportunity to tie this match up. Yeah, get a fresh start. You know, that could be the key to him getting away here. Still not quite up to his feet yet. As Lamont is keeping a lot of pressure on Berwick's back. Now he's away. He tries to turn in, but Lamont is there to split the legs. As you can see, riding time approaching one minute. And so Lamont has an advantage here. Because he's working in on those legs, he's not gonna get called for stalling. And now he has a minute over of riding time, taking that riding time away from Berwick. And so Berwick needs to get an escape and a takedown quick to make this a, a competitive match for him. Both guys here have yet to win a Big Ten duel match. Berwick 0-3, Lamont 0-5, so somebody's gonna come away with their first Big Ten win. And now you got 17 seconds left. If you're Berwick, you need to stand up and you need to get out. That's the only thing you can do. You can see Mark Manning saying, hey, you gotta go, you gotta move. It's short time. Take this match into overtime if you could just get up and get that quick escape. Is there a word caution? Maybe a little too antsy there, Kelby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now riding time locked up. So essentially it is a two point lead for Lam Lamont. So maybe that's why he was going for that switch to try to get a reversal. Berwick almost getting stuck again. I think time's gonna run out, Kelby. And Lamont does, is able to stay on there. That is a stall, but with one second to go, yeah, I don't Lamont's think it's going to matter. Away. Like you said, Kelby, Lamont's going to come away with that riding time, even though it was a stalling call. It's not going to make a difference. And so Taylor Lamont gets the Badgers on the board with a 2-0 victory over Kyle Berwick, his first Big Ten dual victory of the year. And it just goes to show the importance of being aggressive and trying to get that takedown in the first period or even in the second period, you have opportunities to get a takedown and Berwick just couldn't capitalize. So now we head to 141, we have Joe Zargo, sophomore from South River, New Jersey, Bergen Catholic High School, taking on Brock Hardy, the redshirt sophomore from Brigham City, Utah, Box Elder High School. And an amazing season Brock has been having so far, 19 and three, six and three in duels. Dropped his last, ma last match by decision six to four to Real Woods in Iowa City. So we'll expect Hardy to be wrestling with a chip on, this, on his shoulder as well as a lot of those Nebraska wrestlers who dropped their matches last week. Yeah, 
Zargo comes into this one, nine and seven on the year. He's two and three in Big Ten duels. Last time out, he got, he was defeated by Frankie Tall Shahar of Northwestern, 3-2. Keep in mind, Zargo is two and four against ranked opponents as he sits at that 24 spot. As Brock Hardy is ranked six, so obviously a huge gap there. Hardy does have the advantage on paper. However, both wrestlers kind of keeping it close, working their tie-ins early, but that's kind of what you expect at the start of a match. Yeah, both guys here, and so far, all three matches have started out a little slower pace than maybe what we're typically used to in the lower weights. And I think that's the key word right there, Kelby, the slow pace of these matches. Haven't seen a whole lot of energy. We haven't seen anyone get back points, tilts. It's just all been very slow and technical wrestling. Two minutes gone, one minute left here in the first period. No score, no real attack by either wrestler just yet. As Hardy's trying to work a front headlock there to no avail. It almost looked like Hardy got a little shaken up trying to work that headlock there. Had to take a step back for a minute. And he's just right back into his tie-ins. A tough wrestler Hardy is and can be, especially when he gets on the offensive end. But so far there's nothing. It almost looked like Zargo tried to work in a shot there. Hardy almost tries to head toss him, <laughs> but that doesn't work. And they're going to go back to neutral. Nebraska doesn't like it. 15 seconds to go here. It's a shot by Hardy, defended by Zargo. Duck under there. As Hardy now is in on a leg, looking for a late period takedown. No call yet. Time is out. And no, no takedown, and we're going to, there goes the challenge brick. Oh, and you know Manning loves that brick. He's been two for two so far. Last week he was two for two, and he kept getting that challenge brick back. So Manning definitely has a keen eye for knowing when points are awarded. They're wanting Brock Hardy to get that takedown. What did you think, Kelby? Takedown. Do you think he got it? No takedown. And there, I jinxed it, Kelby. <laughs> Manning gets his first brick wrong. Tough no call there for Hardy. And he will start the second period on bottom. No score here. So big break for Zargo and the Badgers. Let's see if he can capitalize as Hardy is up to his feet. Trying to peel hands here and is away for the escape. So first points on the board in favor of Brock Hardy. He goes right in on the attack there. I was going to say you have to expect a shot from Hardy at this point. As I may have jinxed myself again, just hold on. <laughs> it was almost like Brock Hardy went in on a shot and then Zargo was able to counter it. Almost had Hardy for two, but went out of bounds. There's a shot. That's two. Takedown by Hardy. Low ankle pick there. And I think that's the two that Hardy was looking for. He's looking for a cradle here. And he might have it. He's really pinching. Pinching that. And he does. Looks like the lock was broke. But he did have almost a cradle locked up here. Now he goes for a dump. And gets Zargo back on his belly. That was a great dump by Hardy. Zargo getting back up to his feet. But Hardy able to take that left leg in. And just like you said, Kelby, a simple dump. And now... Hardy almost coming on 30 seconds of riding time here. Oh, he has both legs in, breaking him down to his belly. Pretty hopeless position or helpless position for Zargo. As riding time is ticking up near a minute with 30 seconds to go here in the second period. 3-0 Brock Hardy. An escape and a takedown in this period. And 
has that right leg in, and he's figure fouring it with his other leg. Now Zargo is trying to dump Hardy on his hip. And you got to be careful when you're Zargo reaching for that back foot, kind of almost exposing the back. A quick tilt. Hardy could have put him on his back. Yeah, time runs out on Zargo. Let's take a look at this takedown. This time, no question on that takedown. Zargo chooses neutral to start the third period here. Down 3 nothing. Brock Hardy does have a minute 19 of riding time, as you see. So if it ends with over a minute, he will add another point. Zargo has been close a couple times to a takedown. Is now Hardy's in on another shot, a low ankle shot collects the two again a big takedown for hardy makes it five nothing in favor of the husker and slowly but surely hardy's just mining away at those points finding advantages when he can go in on a shot now with a very comfortable five to zero lead almost want to say six to zero with the minute and a half riding time he does need two more takedowns to get the major if that's what they're looking for Hardy is going to continue to ride Zargo, at least for the moment, as we are under a minute remaining here. He threw the leg and he was looking for a cheap tilt there. And now Zargo with the reversal. Now Zargo will cut him. And he's in on a shot right away. Looking for a takedown. Hardy has the right leg of Zargo. So no points awarded just yet as Zargo is trying to get around behind him. And a lot of fire coming from Zargo here late in the match. You know, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be enough with the 20 seconds that remain. However, you have to admire the fire that was lit under Zargo as he went on that offensive. But I think Hardy built up this match from the beginning and I think he's going to walk away by decision with this one. Yeah, time running out here on Zargo. I was under five seconds to go, but he's still fighting for that takedown. Now he's pulling him in. Time runs out. However, Hardy add one point for riding time. Victoria 7-2 over Joey Zargo. Brock Hardy obviously happy with that one. A dominating win over Zargo, 7-2. Yeah. He's going to have his hands full with Javier Morton. And there's a quick takedown by Morton. As they go out of bounds, Medora's 7-10 this year. Medora's only com competed in open tournaments. So this is his first dual action of the year. And he's 8-10 overall. His NCAA dual record is 5-8 or his NCAA record, I should say. Like you said, Kelby, this is his first duel. And that can be kind of tricky because with weigh-ins, before competition and duel meets, you get one hour. For tournaments, you get two hours. So a little difference there, but it could go a long way as we'll see if that has any impact on stamina here for Medora. He's working that front headlock on Morton as they go out of bounds. And we'll come back in. It doesn't look like as he's running to the center of the mat, is Medora. He seems fired up for his, his opportunity here to put on a Badger singlet. They're going to warn Medora here, maybe watch the heavy hands. May have gotten him in the eye as well. Left-handed shot, no, no luck there for Morton. Morton comes in this one, four and nine on the year. A senior from Gaylord, Minnesota, Sibley East High School. 
He's taking place for Ridge Lovett. Lovett redshirting this year. There's a stall warning on Medora for backing out. So that could come into play as we wind down here in the match. But so far it's 2-1 Morton with a takedown escape by Medora. 6-3 Huskers have the lead. Huskers got wins by Liam Cronin and Brock Hardy while the Badgers countered with a win by Taylor Lamont. And like you said, Kelby Lamont, so far the only winner for the Badgers here today, defeating Kyle Berwick by decision. And you almost wonder, as we get to the middle of that pack, we know that's where Nebraska is strongest with Peyton Robb and Bubba Wilson and Mikey Labriola. Oh, my. Huge throw by Morton. Got the crowd to their feet. <laughs> Big two points there by Dane Morton in a blink of an eye. I mean, we were mid-conversation and he just threw them. Oh, that really lit a fire under this crowd too. As now Morton has the leg in. Medora on his belly. And if you're Morton, you kind of want to work a tilt here. You do have that 45 seconds of riding time to your advantage. However, you do have nine seconds left, so there's not really a chance for a tilt. However, you just got to respect that takedown. <laughs> time runs out here in the first period. Morton leads four to one as here it is. Look at this throw, double unders here. And it looks like a side trip. Just got in the right position. Those double under hooks, step to the side and go. Impressive from Dane Morton. As those two points, well deserved. Now Morton will start this period on bottom. He's to a tripod position here. Created some space there, grabbed the head and escapes. 5-1, now the lead for Dane Morton. Adora, the junior, he's from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, Brookfield Academy High School, the junior, taking the place of Austin Gomez, who, as we mentioned, hurt his knee wrestling Yaya Thomas on Friday. Hopefully he is able to compete at a later time. And here's where you gotta be careful if you're Medora. Because Morton's got that lock in with that left hand. However, they are gonna go back to neutral. But Medora, as we've seen so far, can make a lot of action happen just from that neutral position. And it's going to come quick. Yeah, stalemate was the call. They brought him back to the center. A takedown, either way, would be huge. A takedown by Morton would extend the lead to 7-1. to one, But a takedown by Medora would close the gap to 5-3. to three. So a huge following. Yeah, 35 seconds here. Takedown for either guy is huge. Like I said, Morton could extend the lead and look for a major, which would be huge for the team. Medora is getting his first wrestling action in over a month. Last time he wrestled was at the Soldier Salute when he went three and three. And Dane Morton has had his hands full this year indeed. Four and nine so far this year. He's three and five in duels. Like he said, taking that place for 149, Ridge Lovett, who decided to redshirt. Give himself an extra year here at the program as Dane Morton has definitely filled his role stepping up, especially here today. Now Morton with the 5-1 lead here. Medora will go down to start this third period. Oh, 
Morton throws that left leg in. He's reaching cross body. Try to grab that, that opposite wrist. See, so has Medora flattened out on his belly. Not a fun position if you're Medora. Riding time up over a minute now. Minute 20 and counting. So Morton looking to lock that up here shortly. Stalemate is the call there. And we will go back to the go back to center. Probably good for Medora's. He wasn't looking in a very good spot there. He was bellied out for that amount of time, somehow still able to keep Morton from. And another big lift from Morton as we're right back to that position. But as I was saying, Medora's been doing a great job of navigating Morton's hands from that bottom position, still being able to establish his base and not go belly out. As it is resulting in that stalemate. He is keeping Morton from turning him, however, but Morton still almost on two minutes of riding time. And there's a big reversal. As Morton let go of the leg, he was getting counted on by the ref. So that could have potentially been a stall call. Instead, there's an escape by Morton. It's 6-3 now. Riding time is locked up, so essentially a 7-3 lead for Morton over Medora. And with 23, 23 seconds left, Kelby, you know, Dane Morton at this point, you just want to avoid stall calls and just pretty much ride this one out. Yeah, feet to back is really all you can hope for if you're Medora. As Morton's the one digging that left-handed underhook in. 10 seconds to go here. Crowd starting to feel it. Looks like Morton will come away victorious. We can extend this Nebraska lead to 9-3. to three. At the ride time point, a 7-3 victory by Dane Morton over Aiden Medora. Dane Morton just looks like he's exhausted and he's he's done. He's like for the Huskers. And Peyton Robb, kind of the golden boy for Nebraska this year, 18-0, sitting in that number one spot at the 157 pound weight class. Going up against Garrett Model so far, 13 and six on the year. He's nine and four in duels. So this is not an opponent to take lightly if you're Rob. However, Peyton Rob has just been on an absolute tear this year. Yeah, good call on Model. He's a co-captain, and he also beat sixth-ranked Kendall Coleman of Purdue 4-3. So he is known to bring it when it matters most against the opponents that matter most. So, like you said, Rob cannot take this one lightly. Rob, like you said, ranked number one. There's a single leg attempt there. Has the, the right leg in the air. We'll see how he chooses to finish here. He has it clamped between his legs. You can see Rob trying to kind of top shelf that right leg, maybe go in for a trip. He's, he's in a good position now. And he's gonna try to tree chop him in, trips. And there's the two finally given. It was a little late there, but two finally given for Rob on that takedown. Peyton Rob was in a good position on that single leg, was able to shelf that leg high, finish with a nice treetop. Almost in a kind of a hopeless position if you're model. Rob scooping that right ankle of model. This could be a huge lift, Kelby. Nice, yes, big lift by Rob, returning him to the mat. A minute to go here, two nothing, Peyton Rob with the lead. You can see riding time accumulating starting here for Rob. He's up over 35 seconds and counting. Just keeping a lot of pressure 
on model on his hands and the upper part of his back. It looks like he's trying to tilt him. He was trying for that wrist there, that right wrist. You see him pull that in. And there it is. There it is. Just couldn't quite get him up on his hips enough to expose his back, but 20 seconds remaining here. Rob already over a minute riding time. And there's not much you can do in this position if you're Rob except just keep riding it out. Let the period come to a close. And it will. Peyton Rob with a 2-0 lead is here to take down. Beautiful tree top. Gets that leg in and around. Rob will start this period on bottom. There's a big lift and a roll by Rob as he's looking for a reversal and he collects the two reversal. And so Peyton Rob, after the lift, rolls through it, able to get behind the hips of Model on an easy reversal. Now Model wants to take that takedown right off the bat. And now Model looking for a reversal of his own as Rob is still collecting riding time as he is on top currently. And there it is, there's the reversal by Model. So now it's 4-2. Model with that right leg in. Trying for a far side cradle. Now Rob with a roll, and he comes out on top with a reversal. Third reversal of the period as Rob reversal, model reversal. Now Rob again strikes back. Something interesting I just saw over on the Nebraska bench, Kelby Coach Manning got up and walked into the tunnel and disappeared for a solid 30 seconds before coming right back out. You almost wonder what's going on there. Peyton Rob, however, in control. He has riding time now up over two minutes. Keeps scooping that leg of model and extending it out. Now Rob switching to the right side, trying to ride that side, see if he can't get anything going on a turn that way. Model to his feet, a lift. Big Matt return, 10 seconds to go here. And that will do it for the second period. Again, three reversals in that period. 6-2, Rob with the lead, and Model goes neutral to start this third period. He's been rowed for two minutes and 32 seconds, so easy decision for him to go neutral as Rob now in on a high crotch. And now he goes dump this time. Still no two yet. And the flexibility for Model getting his hands back behind the hips of Rob to prevent the two. Nice job by Model, good defense. Cause a stalemate there. And that's just what you want if you're Model. You are down by four with a minute left. I mean, feet to back is the best scenario you could get if your model, or if he could work a couple takedowns in it, it looks like Rob's not gonna let him have that. Big takedown, eight to three now, essentially nine three riding time is locked up, so all he needs is a takedown here to get a major decision. Model in on a high crotch here, has Rob on his butt. And it just looks like it's not gonna be enough for Model. But you gotta be careful here if you're Rob. Don't wanna get yourself on your back by accident, but Rob's in control. They call potentially dangerous there. 44 seconds to go here, Peyton Rob ahead, eight to three, essentially nine three with the riding time locked up. So again, a takedown would give him a major decision. And there it is. There's a big lift. 
takedown followed by a lift by Peyton Robb. 10-3 is the lead for the Nebraska wrestler. Looking to salt this one away. And it's clear here with 20 seconds left that Rob's going to come out with the win. And if you're model, the best thing you can do right now, obviously, it's not going to look like he's going to go to his back to get the pin. But, uh, you know, the, the only thing you can really do is just give up the three, four points and uh, instead of having it be a pin and, you know, giving up six points to put it out of reach. But Peyton Rob closing this one out. Nice victory by Peyton Rob. At the right time point, 11-3 winner, Peyton Robb. Major decision, that's four points for the team. Hamity, a co-captain as well. Austin Gomez, Eric Barnett, Garrett Model, Trent Hilger, and Dean Hamity are your captains, co-captains, I should say, for your Wisconsin Badgers. To have that many captains just has to say something <laughs> about the team and the respect that they have for all of these guys. Absolutely. Hamadi has himself a resume at that number seven spot at the 165 class. Wilson, who is not ranked, however, so far this year, he's nine and nine. He's one and five in duels, so he hasn't been doing the best in duels this year. Definitely has his hands full against a top ten opponent. Yeah, Hamity. Came right in after Badger Evan Wick transferred to Cal Poly, and they almost are identical. Nice, tall, lanky frames for Evan Wick, and now Dean Hamity causes a lot of problems for wrestlers with, with how tall and long his arms are and his body is. There's a shot attempt and a throw by Hamity, but Bubba Wilson not giving up here as he continues to circle Hamity reaching over and here's where the length of Hamity comes into play as he's reaching and grabbing the far ankle. Now he's trying to work for a cradle. But a great job by Bubba Wilson squaring his hips. Much to the appreciation of the Husker faithful. And Bubba Wilson was almost in some danger there. Almost getting to his back. But things look a lot scarier than they really are. <laughs> Not to mention, Kelby, that Nebraska is just in a commanding lead of this duel. As they're getting right into the right into the sweet spot where they got all their strength and right in the middle there. With Bubba Wilson, Peyton Robb, Mikey Labriola coming up next. Contact fell out there. Hamity was in on a shot again, but Wilson able to kick his leg out. <laughs> you can hear the, oh, from the crowd as Hamity tries to put his contact lens back in. They're going to call time. And has anybody got any contact solution? <laughs> I hope his eyesight isn't as bad as mine. If I lost a contact, I would be in danger <laughs> that, if I was trying to wrestle. That was one of the funnier things I've ever seen. He tries to put the contact lens back in, and everyone simultaneously goes, Ooh. <laughs> Hamity does get on the board with a takedown. A stall call was also given to Wilson. So keep that in mind as the match goes on. Two stall calls equals a point for your opponent. As Hamdy now in the lead, 2-0 as Wilson, nice job getting away there as Hamdy's strength is on top. But Wilson able to get away. A big escape as Hamdy in on another attack there. But they are out of bounds. 12 seconds to go here as here's the nice lift by Hamdy collect the two from Wilson. And that's how the first period will end. Two to one is the score. Hamity with the lead. Wilson. Wilson will go down to start the second period. 
I'm sorry. I still can't get over that contact <laughs> lens. <laughs> oh, my goodness. ESPN not top ten if you're listening. <laughs> It's a nice hard cross face by Hamity. And, you know, on the good note, he didn't put it back in. He took it over to his trainer and put in some solution. So it will be clean the next time he puts it in his And let's see if that will be the solution to this match. <laughs> it's a Sunday afternoon, folks. We're full of puns. I hope that's not the last one. <laughs> Sunday pun day here. See, now you're getting in on it. <laughs> Hamity riding tough here as he's over a minute ride time. Two to one is the score here. Wilson doing a good job staying off his back as Hamity again is, is really tough on top. And that, just as I say that, he almost goes to his back with a hard cross face by Hamity. Like you said, that cross face just came in quick. Oof. Almost getting Wilson right to his back to no avail. But Maddie's just going to continue to build that ride time with over a minute and a half. He's looking for a tilt on the edge, and he gets it. He's still got that right foot in, so they're going to still – Technically say he's in bounds, not anymore. Only a two back points. You know, you see in sports like football and basketball, like you, you know, you got those toe taps, those toe tap catches. This is almost kind of like the same thing. It's called a toe tap tilt. Getting those back points while still having that right foot in. And you can see only a three count, so that's why he only received two back points there. Still a big turn by Hamity as he leads this one 4-1 now. Riding time up over two minutes. He's looking for another tilt, and he is, almost has it. Nice job by Wilson to get his arm free as that will do it for the second period. And it seems like Hamadi has really found his identity here in the second period. Bubba Wilson just trying to survive. It's not over yet, however. Only down three points, technically four with pretty much the locked up riding time. But if you're Bubba Wilson, you're gonna have to move quickly. Hamity is away and he will get a reversal, big time reversal. Now he's back to his comfortable position on top. As I believe it should be six to one. I think they gave him a reversal. Yep, there it is. So 6-1 is the score here. Hamity back on top. Riding time locked in now. So it's an essentially a 7-1 lead. Hamity working a tilt again. As you see, he has that left arm barred up. And there's the tilt. 1-2, and there's the count. Four back there makes it 10 to one. And that four point near fall was huge with a minute to go. Pretty much stripping away all hope from Bubba Wilson. Only thing you can get is foot to back, but doesn't look like that's gonna happen. If you're Bubba Wilson, at least play your best defense. Try not to give up a pin to put Wisconsin right back in it. Now he's in, tr in danger of a technical fall is now Hamity deciding whether he's going to cut him or not. It's a big lift here on the edge of the mat. It's 14 to 1, essentially 15 to 1. His riding time is locked up. And you can hear Wisconsin's coaches saying, let him go, let him go. He will let him go. So a takedown. In the last 30 seconds would create the technical fall. Wilson in on a shot here. And I don't think Wilson wants to give up that tech fall. Why would you, right? right. <laughs> yeah, as he's holding on to that leg. Nice job holding on by Ham by Wilson. But Hamity stays with it and gets the takedown. 
just as time expires here. At the ride time point, it's a 17 to two technical fall by Dean Hamity. That's five big points for the Wisconsin Badgers, closing the gap to now 13 to eight. Ranked number two from Easton, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem Catholic High School. A perfect 19 and 0 on the year. Josh Otto comes in from Brookfield, Wisconsin. Arrowhead High School comes in 6 and 11 on the year. His first year as a starter for the Wisconsin Badgers. And he's 2 and 7 in duels. He is not ranked. However, Mikey Labriolt, that number two ranked 174 spot from Easton, Pennsylvania, from Bethlehem Catholic High School, who's just been on an absolute tear this year, getting the win over Nelson Brands last week in Iowa City. He's 9 0 in duels, 18 0 on the year. Shot on the edge of the mat. They go out of bounds. They will restart here. Another low ankle shot there by Labriola as he's trying to isolate the leg here. Has it hooked, and there's the two. Josh Otto, he comes from a long line of athletes. His mother played soccer at UW-Whitewater. His uncle wrestled at UW-Whitewater. His father played football at Concordia, Wisconsin, and his brother Played football at North Dakota, so quite the athletes in that family. My dad played high school football, so. <laughs> <laughs> and wrestled, I should say, as well. <laughs> Labriola got some riding time built up, so now he cuts him. Two to one lead for Labriola. 13-8 dual score here. Victories by Cronin, Hardy, Morton, and Rob for the Huskers. Yes. Labriola tosses his headgear to the side. And that will cause a reset. With a minute left to go, Labriola still got that one point advantage. Had to cut Otto once he synced up that riding time and there goes another takedown, extending the lead to three. Looks like he's gonna cut him once more. And you can hear someone in the audience go, where's he going? <laughs> Hopefully maybe, maybe to incite a stalling call here from the officials because it almost looks like Otto's just circling around trying to avoid. He's got to be careful or else he'll be hit with a stalling late in this first period. Yeah, especially with Labriola already with two takedowns here in this first period. And there it is. The stall call is another attempt by Labriola. And you they... think the fan contributed to that stalling call? <laughs> <laughs> Early start by Labriola, not impressed is the Husker crowd. Sometimes when you're just in the heat of those matches, you can't really hear what's going on around you. Your head is just all focused in there. Labriola just a bit too eager. Another quick attempt by Labriola to no avail and they will go to the second period. 4-2 is the lead by Labriola. Otto's choice, he will go down. Labriola looked to his corner, thought he might it looks like want to intentionally cut him, but. And Manning didn't want to go with that route, but you could see Labriola with the hand gesture like, should I cut him right now? Just go back up to our feet, do what we do best, but. Labriola gonna take some time here. He's looking up at that clock, presumably to collect riding time, and he does, and after that, he does cut him. So a minute two of riding time for Labriola. And a and very a stra lead. strategic approach from Rab Labriola, just getting that riding time. Once he's able to do that, he just cuts him and keeps taking him down. It's almost like a circular pattern 
of takedown, riding time, cut. So here's the takedown. They did call a stalling call on Otto as well, so that's his second, so that is a point for Labriola. So a three-point swing there. And then here's where the cut call might come in. Yep, he is going to go optional start. And he's going to cut him, yep, right here, just... And they ding Otto. Too heavy of a hand there for the Wisconsin Badgers. So one point for Labriola, so now eight to four. You know, there's a difference between heavy hands and just kind of almost essentially punching with an open hand. You almost kind of wonder what's going on on Otto's end. It just doesn't seem, this is a very unusual match for sure as Otto just is kind of circling and spinning and I'm sure Labriola is just as confused, like what is going on? And here's the takedown once more. Another big takedown for Labriola, 10-4 lead here. And now he's gonna cut him again, 30 seconds to go, looking for another takedown. And heck, maybe another stall call as there's a shuck by, trying Woo! to take him to his back, <laughs> who is right? Fasten your seatbelt, Otto. You just got suplexed. Now, since it was injury time, Otto got his choice and went down. And that's the definition of wrestling tough right there, Kelby. <laughs> Coming on an injury like that. Just continuing to do Otto your... with a big escape. And I think Otto's taking advantage. Labriola might not have the same strength of the grip as before he did with that injury. As Otto's gonna take the wise decision, or excuse me, Labriola's gonna take the decision here to go down to start the third period. It was a big escape by Otto there. As they need to stop the match, the clock is not running. And they're still letting him wrestle and they get two reversal. So they gave him the reversal, but the clock wasn't running. As they're gonna go take a look at that, you can hear everyone in the crowd yelling, clock, clock. Yeah, so we'll see if they just manually take the time down for what. And it looked like that's exactly what they're gonna do. And here's that takedown again. While the clock wasn't running, looks like they're just gonna take 15 seconds off. So now there's a minute 45 left to go in the third, but they're still gonna award Labriola. as the officials are trying to get this sorted out. Gives Labriola some time to maybe rest his injury a little, get himself reset. So you see the officiating crew talking with the clock operator here. Everything. So now we are all set. Minute 45 to go. Reversal by Labriola. Now he cuts him, so it's a 14-7 lead. We are back to our feet. And Labriola sitting very comfortably with what is presumed an eight point lead. Already has locked up that riding time. Obviously right here you just almost want to manage. I don't think you have enough time for obviously a bunch of stalling calls. I don't think that's possible, but. This would be a big takedown by Otto as he has Labriola bouncing on one leg. Labriola though is really good in this position. He's really good at scrambling, so. And you can almost see it. Labriola doesn't like to stand straight up. He's got that left leg bent a little bit. Waiting for Otto just, Otto's just pulling him back in. There's like, all right, come on. Let's see what the move is. You don't want to call stalling here and Nebraska definitely isn't happy with it as he's just keeping Labriola up on that leg. And then they go out of bounds. They just called Labriola for stalling. Crowd didn't like it, almost as if to say, what is he supposed to do? Because it looked like Otto walked him out of bounds. And that, was a, that was a little interesting. I mean, Otto had the leg, had the advantage, and was obviously didn't put a finishing move on it. But when I, like, 
when you're Nebraska, what are you supposed to do with your labriole? He's got your leg up. Things getting a little chippy here now. Oh, oh my. Here we there's go. There's a stall call, and there's one again on Otto. So stalling call, and there's another shot attempt. Pushed him out of bounds three and a half seconds ago. 15-7 is the lead. And there's three seconds left, but it looks like that's not going to matter. As time runs out, words are exchanged. Labriola coming out with the win. 16 to seven, Labriola's gonna walk out of this one happy. You almost wonder what was exchanged down there on the map before the, before the match ended there. Obviously Labriola not happy. But Labriola came in, got the win, extends Nebraska's lead 17 to eight. And the energy's starting to ramp up a little <laughs> bit like I talked about, Kelby. Yeah, you're just happy that didn't spill over or create anything extra that, it, that, that shouldn't have happened. So good job, both guys keeping control of their temper right there. Things could have easily spoiled over, boiled over, but they didn't. Labriola with the major decision extends the lead 17 to eight. As now we go to 184, Lenny Pinto for the Huskers taking on Tyler Dow for the Wisconsin Badgers. Dow going for a throw, lands himself almost on his back as they go out of bounds. Dow is looking at his foot saying, I still had a foot in. Remember Dow pinned Iowa's Abe Assad in their duel a week and a half ago, so. Dow can throw if needed. Luckily they went out of bounds. So a nice restart here for Pinto. He could just feel the energy just start to pick up here in the Bob Devaney Center as we reach that 184 spot. Tyler Dow, he's a redshirt senior. He's seven and nine overall. He's six and seven in duels with a 500 record of three and three when it comes to Big Ten opponents. As he is unranked, but Lenny Pinto at that 16 spot, so not necessarily as high as he would like. But still going to have his hands full here with Dow as he tried to throw him early, but that could have went really wrong for Dow. Yeah, it almost went wrong for him, but then he landed on top, and then the ref called him out of bounds, so no harm, no foul for either wrestler. We are scoreless minute and a half gone here in the first period. Collar tie for both guys. As now you see Pinto with that right arm overhook there. Dow with the left arm underhook. See if either wrestler uses that to their advantage. As there's looked like a fireman's carry attempt or a high crotch by Pinto, but it was stuffed by Dow. Now Dow is trying for a front headlock. Pinto able to escape one minute to go here. No score, 17 to eight, Huskers lead the duel. There's a nice that shot attempt by Pinto, gets him to his hip, and two takedown, now looking for back points. And he has a one count, but that is all. Almost feet to back there for Lenny Pinto. As Pinto went in on a great shot. Dow able to work his way back up to his base. And here's another return from Pinto. And with the short time remaining, doesn't look like he's gonna get any back points, but Pinto about caught Dow. Nebraska wanted a two count there, unable to get it. So now Dow turns in a big escape with 10 seconds to go as they go out of bounds. Big escape by Dow. Can we check out? Quite a bit of action there. Two to one is the score. And a little bit of chippiness there to end <laughs> that first period. They're kind of exchanging, exchanging looks. But yeah, here's that takedown once more. As Pinto 
gets Dow foot to back. No back points awarded, however. You almost wonder how this second period's gonna go after those words and almost hands were exchanged <laughs> as we're getting chippier and chippier and chippier later into this duel. Nice job by Pinto getting the escape there. Three to one now, he leads it over Dow as Dow has an overlock there. Now he's gonna go, it looks like for a trip again, but Pinto with the throw to his back, has Dow on his back on the edge and they go out of bounds. The second ref telling him they're out of bounds before he could call the pin, a huge throw by oh, wow. Pinto. And Pinto throws him right to the side, keeps that right foot in, gets him right to his back. Look at this foot right here. That right foot, that toe, able to get him to his back right when it goes out right there before the pin was called. Pinto getting the energy in this place. Big six point move there, two for the takedown, four for the near fall. Now extends the lead, now eight, it's 9-1. Pinto with the lead. As Dow to his feet, peels hand and is away, 9-2. A great counter throw by Pinto as Dow originally tried to toss Pinto. He went for that inside trip. Nine to his lead, 40 seconds to go here. As the Husker Power chant going on here. Inside Bob Devaney Center here in Lincoln, Nebraska, 17 to eight. Huskers with the lead. This match specifically, Lenny Pinto with a 9-2 lead over Tyler Dow. And there's another takedown by Pinto. And that almost looked just like a straight up tackle from Pinto, just getting right behind the leg, getting it hooked. Straight to the mat. And a nice last minute takedown in the second period from Pinto. Big takedown there by Pinto, reattack there. Trip to his, almost to his back. Nice job by Dow bellying out. As Dow will start the period on bottom. 11-2 is the lead. Dow to his feet and is away. There's another. another takedown. A beautiful glass double. That's the second time we've seen Pinto hit that takedown as he now has that 10 point lead. Big lift by Pinto. Jeez, Pinto's bringing it today. I think he's starting to, if he's not already becoming a fan favorite, he's only a red shirt freshman so Huskers better get used to Lenny Pinto over the next four years. Thirteen to three lead, and he's now looking for back points. Is he, if he can suck back Tyler Dow, there he goes over the head, and he Dow. able to get out. And he was so close to sucking back that head and the shoulders of Dow. Almost had a half Nelson out of it, but Dow able to escape and right back to a glass double. Here we go. And it seems like that has to be his favorite takedown right there is that glass double. There's an escape by Dow. So 40 seconds to go here. 13 to 4 is the lead. It's essentially 14 to 4 with that riding time locked up by Lenny Pinto. back to the center of the mat here. And we'll lock up in a collar tie. 15 seconds to go here. A takedown would be just huge for Pinto. Not necessarily he already has the major decision locked up, but 
You just tell the crowd just wants that extra takedown. And there it is, and you love to see it. And like you said, to finish it out, Lenny Pinto bringing the energy here to the Devaney Center, taken down to his back right at the end of the match, getting win by major decision. Kelby, like you said, 16 to four, Lenny Pinto coming out on top of that 184 spot. Nice victory by Lenny Pinto that makes it 21 to eight. As that puts the team score out of reach for Wisconsin. So Nebraska will come away victorious and this is a big match though here. I was looking forward to this one. For Wisconsin, you have Braxton Amos. And for Nebraska, you have Silas Allred. Silas Allred, the 197 pound red shirt sophomore from Anderson, Indiana. So far on the year, 16 and five. He's six and three in duels, has five pins, has four major decisions so far on the year. He is ranked 22nd, however, going up against Amos. And Amos, the 12th ranked wrestler in that 197 spot, has himself a resume as well. Braxton Amos has a 14 and four overall record. He's 10 and three in duels, definitely certifying him at that 12 spot as they are 10 places away from each other, but this match could be a heck of a lot closer than you think. Yeah, Amos looks like he has that, looks like he does have a cradle locked up, but now he's on the edge, he gives up on the cradle. Now goes for a single leg, Allred trying to scoot a little bit out of bounds and he gets there and they go out of bounds. So we will go back to the center, some action here already 45 seconds into the match. And with the 197 matchup underway, Kelby, you are correct. Nebraska has taken this duel away because the most Wisconsin can do is two pins and the math just doesn't add up. Wisconsin would only make it to 20. So Nebraska has put away this duel, getting the win over Wisconsin. And the team implications are now over as we now focus more on individual matches here. They're gonna call potentially dangerous there on the left leg of Allred Amos. As a very, he came in with a lot of credentials into college. Now get this, he went 142 and 0 as a high schooler. He didn't give up a single offensive point during high school. Wow, that's impressive. There's a throw by Amos. Takedown almost, nice job by Allred to get off his back and that's where Amos is experienced he represented team usa on the senior world team at the 2022 senior world championships in greco-roman look at this throw it looks a headlock but a nice throw by amos allred good job bellying out to avoid any back points two nothing amos with the lead as he cuts all red. Under a minute here. Left in the first period. Two to one, Amos with the lead. Amos 14 and four on the year. I mean, just look at the pedigree of this guy. He was ranked, he was ranked first at 220 pounds by Flow Wrestling, Intermat, The Open Mat, Win Magazine, USA Today. He's ranked the third overall wrestler of the 2020 class. At one point, he was the number one pound for pound wrestler in the country. So, just one of those guys that come in with a lot of accolades, hoping to see him put it all together at this collegiate level as they go out of bounds. And it looks like he's got a little bit of a limp as he returns to the mat. You almost wonder where that came from. He seems to be moving just fine now, but he was, as he was walking back, he had a little bit of a, a limp in his step, I would say. And there's a nice shot by Allred here as we almost reach the end of the period, and oh, time runs out. And Allred really, really wanted that shot to no avail. The time runs out. As Amos still takes the lead by a point. 
Allred will start on bottom there as he gets to his feet. Cradle attempt by Amos. Now he has Allred leg in the air. They go out of bounds. And we will reset. Yeah, Amos definitely something doesn't seem right with him as he comes back gingerly to the center of the mat. Allred to his feet now and goes with a roll through. Now he's looking for a reversal and will get it. Take reversal. Allred takes a 3-2 lead over Amos. And a huge reversal from Allred. To say the least, talked about how Amos had all these accolades and never gave up a offensive point in high school. And obviously that's a lot different from the collegiate level, KLB, but props to Allred. They're out the edge of the mat and head lever position there by Allred. Is, here's the reversal. Nice roll through and he's able to collect the leg of Amos. Turns into him. Boom, reversal. Amos bails out. Just great positioning from Allred as he collects that leg, able to get his hips around and collects the reversal. Well deserved. There's a roll by Amos, you gotta be careful if you're Amos. He almost got caught on his back trying to hit those roll throughs. You know, if you're gonna hit a Granby, if you're gonna hit a roll through, you're gonna have to do it right. Or else you could see something just like that. He could get stuck on his back and this match could be over. Amos on his belly now. Nice job by Allred, he's eliminated all the riding time that Amos had accumulated and now is already starting to stack up some himself. As we have 30 seconds to go here, second period, 3-2 is the lead for Silas Allred after a reversal. Now he has that right arm barred up. And we'll see if he runs the bar, if he tries for a tilt. He's really just trying to work a position to get Amos to his back. Well, as he's, you can see him start to run that bar just now as he's trying to work a half Nelson with that left hand. But time's gonna run out in the second period. Not gonna have enough time, but I think Allred likes what he sees. He's ahead by a point. When he's on top, he has the positioning to be able to tilt Amos. You almost wonder what Allred's plan is if he wants to go in on top or bottom here. They're gonna go back up in the neutral position. That's what Manning wants to do. Yeah, so Amos with his choice goes neutral. 3-2 lead here for Allred. Shot attempt, good. Good defense, front headlock. Offense there by Allred. Here comes Allred, he's got all the momentum now, leading by three. He's got about a minute of ride time. Just a few seconds away from getting that riding time locked up. Allred in a terrific position. Yep, it's now he is over a minute with a minute 10 and counting. Amos did not have a real attempt to get out when Allred was riding him in the second period and pretty soon they're gonna get up. There's the stall call on Amos. Allred has him right where he wants him, flat on his belly, collecting riding time. Another Gramby attempt by Amos and he's about to get free, but they're all on the edge of the mat here. He finally calls him out of bounds. 37 and a half seconds to go here. Allred with a big lead here, 5-2. Check out this takedown again. Pretty poor shot by Amos and just go behind. Nebraska's bench loves it. Silas Allred just taking advantage of the poor shot from Amos. You almost wonder if Amos' injury is getting to him. And he's just trying to wrestle through it, but Allred clearly looks like he's more physically dominant as he gets Amos to belly out. 
And with 30 seconds to go, I think All Reds about locked this one up. Yeah, and you know, I think this was the victory that All Red needed. You know, he was kind of missing that signature victory this year, and this, this is it. You almost wonder what's going through Amos's head as he's just getting ridden out to end the match, and that'll do it. And Allred gets a major win over 12th ranked Amos. Allred's gonna shoot up in those rankings here by next week. And there's that gingerly walk you can see. With Silas Allred, winner by decision. Up and left knee, or left leg of Amos as he's getting helped off. As he walks gingerly back to the locker room. Hope everything is okay with him. And this will be our last matchup of the evening. Fans are already slowly starting to trickle out as Nebraska's locked up this lead, this win I should say. As Cale Davidson will finish the Huskers off here at home against Trent Hilger. Hilger with an 11 and six record. He's eight and five in duels. Looking at Cale Davidson, he is eight and 12 and three and six in duels. So this match could go either way. With team implications, it really isn't too big of a deal. However, when it comes down to, you know, the team implications are now out of the way. We, we were past that after we got to that 197 spot. And now as we look more not on a team base, but we more look at those individual matches. Hilger, like you said, 11 and six, the graduate student, he's been in college for a long time. He's earned his bachelor's degree already in agricultural business management. He's already now currently pursuing a master's degree in educational leadership and policy analysis. So shout out to him and his educational respects as well. He's also on the mat, a two-time All-American. I'm still working on my first degree. <laughs> now he's looking for a tilt. Here he has a two nothing lead over Davidson. You could see him try to work that tilt very early, trying to get Davidson to his back. As Davidson hasn't had himself the year he has liked. Last week got pinned in Iowa City late in the match against Tony Cassiope. Coming back, wrestling another ranked opponent in back-to-back -back weeks. So Davidson has had his hands full. Yeah, he had a big victory in the Minnesota duel against Garrett Joel, so you thought maybe that might snowball into a couple victories here, but just no, there's just tough sledding in the Big Ten. It's the premier wrestling conference for a reason, and every match come out, it's a grind. Nothing is ever given, Kelby, I'll tell you that much, especially at the collegiate level. The numbers really don't mean anything yeah. at this point. Something else that's given would be nicknames. And I'll give you one guess at what Trent Hilger's nickname is. Do I want to know? <laughs> it's Thor. <laughs> very, it's very, very fitting. Very fitting. So he's putting a tough ride on Davidson, reaching for that left wrist. Now he has a right-handed or left-handed claw. It's just a lot of weight to carry on your back if you're Davidson on the bottom. And Davidson does seem to be a bit undersized at that 285 class standing there. Mm -hmm. You almost wonder what he weighed in. He just looks a little bit undersized. He doesn't look as big as those big boys, especially when we saw last week when he went up against Cassiope. He almost looked like he doubled him in size. So Davidson's definitely on the smaller end of that 285 heavyweight class. But to no avail is only, uh, only behind by three. Now there's a quick escape by Hilger. Extends his lead to three nothing over Kale Davidson. Check out that riding time. 
that Hilger has accumulated almost two and a half minutes, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, he had a quick takedown in the first period. Rode Davidson out the entire rest of the way. Quick escape here, now looking to add on with another takedown. But Davidson hanging tough in there. Collar tie, trying to keep his ground. There's a shot as they go out of bounds. Ref can't find his whistle. <laughs> and that calls him for a stall. Dinged Davidson for stalling. That's one point Hilger. So now it's 4 nothing. And you're right, Davidson, you can just see the difference in body types between these two wrestlers. Heavyweight obviously can be max is 285. There's a takedown by Hilger. It looks like Davidson tried to go in on a shot. Just didn't get the look he wanted and Hilger able to take advantage just because he's got that right arm just locked up. You almost wonder if Hilger's trying to work a tilt here with the remaining 30 seconds in the second. Yeah, the under 30 seconds to go here. Three minutes now and counting of ride time for Trent Hilger. He has a 6 nothing lead. Unbelievable. Are you hearing what I'm hearing out there? <laughs> no, what's that? There's a lot of chirping going on from the crowd. Someone <laughs> said, get a haircut, and everyone started laughing. And <laughs> I'll tell you, this crowd has been definitely involved today. <laughs> we run out of time here in the second period, so we head to the third. 6 nothing. Hilger with the lead, and if I do say so myself, I mean, Hilger can pull off the long hair. Some people can't. Hey, you know what? That's why his nickname is Thor. <laughs> you don't have to listen to that lady. You don't have to cut your hair. Davidson starts the third period on bottom. To his feet, and Hilger just essentially lets him go. It's 6-1 here now. Nebraska already wrapped up the dual score as they lead the dual 24 to 8. And this is both the team's last duel of this January. Jam packed duels for this team. Every weekend they were out traveling, dueling some other Big Ten opponents. So, kind of a grind here of a January as we head into February and then March. Davidson with the escape. Riding time locked up, so essentially 9-2 lead here for Hilger. And it looks like Hilger's just going to salt this one away. He's got a six-point lead, 40 seconds to go. Not a whole lot you can do with Davidson. Just look at the size. <laughs> I, I can't get over that. The size comparison between these two wrestlers as Hilger just staggers over Davidson. It looks a lot different here in person than it does on your television screen. Hilger in on another shot here. Has the left leg of Davidson. Oh, Davidson trying to crotch lift. Or... Hilger has both ankles now. Trying to come through here. Needs a takedown to secure the major decision. And he will not get it. Good job by Davidson fighting the entire seven minutes. Hilger comes away victorious at the ride time. It's 9-2 victory at three points. Dual team score ends. Nebraska 24, Wisconsin 11. And looking back at that last match, Kelby, you got to take away the positives. Even though Davidson did not get the win, he was able to play a good enough defense to keep them from major decision. So you have to look at the little things. And with that win, Kelby, I do want to say this marks 300 career dual wins for head coach Mark Manning.